Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are going to be exploring how one of the primary components of black powder, which is carbon, typically, you know, a, a good grade of charcoal, affects the burn rate of said black powder. So I have a couple other carbon sources here. We have activated charcoal, which has a super, super high surface area, which is why they use it for absorbing poisons and, you know, heavy metals out of water and that sort of stuff. Um, very, very uh, porous material, microscopically, of course, and <laughs> detoxifies, ooh, buzzwords. And then we have graphite. So just taken from a half inch rod, and I'm gonna be making 50 grams of black powder with each constituent here. So we'll do 50 grams of willow charcoal. Now this willow charcoal we actually made in a previous video. So if you're curious to see how we made that, check that out. And graphite just from a half inch rod. And the activated charcoal, I just grabbed this on Amazon. Uh, it's coconut based, so probably coconut husk, I'd imagine. And we'll see how these compare. Now, you would think with the super, super high surface area of activated charcoal that it would make for ridiculously good black powder, but I've heard that it does not. I've never actually tested it myself though, so I'm pretty curious to see how this works. Now, of course, you can't have black powder without your uh, other two base components. Now, YouTube probably won't let me say it, so I'm just going to call this magical potassium-based oxygen. Who the heck knows what this could be? And then we got our sulfur. So, let's give it a go, see how this turns out. Now, obviously we cannot use the graphite in cylinder form, so I want to get it reasonably powdered before adding it to the ball mill. So I'm just going to throw it in a couple Ziplocs here. Old college day style, double bagging it for when you're not quite sure how it's going to turn out. And I'll give that the schmacky schmacky with a hammer. Ho ho ho, bringing out the bone hammer. This was actually uh, from my foray into the medical device industry. Wow, this graphite's tough. Well, that powdered like shit. This might look kind of wrong. Man, this stuff just is not breaking down too nicely. I'm sure it'll break down pretty quickly in the ball mill, but I want to give them all a fair shot. You know, the, the charcoal will instantly turn into a, a fine powder. The activated charcoal, I think that already... Yeah, that is a powder, a very fine powder. So I want to give the graphite a fair shot because I'm going to mill each one for an hour and see how they turn out. And I don't want to, you know, 20 minutes of the milling time to be dedicated to just breaking the graphite down into a fine powder. So what else can we do here? Maybe a coffee mill, a little coffee grinder. I think that'll do it. Oh wow, that didn't work at all. Holy shit. Blasted a hole right through the side. Son of a bitch. That is some angry graphite. Insane. And look at that shard. Just blasted it right out of there. Oh, there goes my good old nitrate grinder. That sucks. Alright, so at this point I've been banging away at the graphite for... <laughs> 20 minutes or so, and I think I'm just blowing wind up my ass. It's not getting anywhere, so I'm going to sift out. I need something bigger to sift into. I'm going to sift out the bigger chunks, get left with the reasonably smaller powder, and uh, and we'll, we'll just mash that out the amount we need. Hopefully I have enough there to make a 50-gram uh, batch. Otherwise, I'll have to adjust the ratios a bit. Alright, so at this point, we have our graphite mostly powdered. It's, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. The mill will take care of the rest. So we're going to measure out 7.5 grams of each charcoal. So, 
your your typical black powder ratio 75 15 10 we're cutting it in half so it'll be 37.5 7.5 and 5 so let's measure each of these out close enough all right so there is our graphite measured out and now we'll measure out our charcoal just clean the spoon for good measure keep any uh any residual graphite at bay. Uh, charcoal is going to occupy a lot more volume because it's a lot less dense than the graphite. Alright, pretty much on the money. So there's our below charcoal. And now we'll do the activated charcoal. Uh, I think there's a seal on the up. Of course it's sealed. Everyone's terrified cyanide will be put in their shit. Wow, this stuff is dark. It looks like uh, looks like carbon black, lamp black. So this seems to be a little bit more dense than the charcoal. Alrighty then. Pretty astounding though to see that difference in volume. I mean, just goes to show you densities and whatnot. Look at the amount that's in the graphite cup versus charcoal versus the uh, activated charcoal. So you can see the graphite is a massive order, order of magnitude more dense than either of these. So now I'll just measure out the uh, potassium based oxygen <laughs> and the sulfur. And we'll get each of these in the mill, run them for an hour each, and see how the resulting black powders compare. So for a small batch like this, I'm not going to use one of the uh, homemade ball mill jars. I'm just going to use this old Harbor Freight jar. They're pretty crappy, but they're, they're good for small stuff. So I got this filled with a bunch of lead, lead shot that I poured a long time ago. And we're going to start with the charcoal. So there's our charcoal, solid potassium oxygen, and there's our sulfur. And we'll get this sucker loaded up and on the ball mill. Set up way out in the yard here. Load that on there. Got a positive stop. And I have a remote switch set up, basically just a surge protector that I'm going to use the on off switch on to turn the mill on and off remotely because you don't want to be by a ball mill at any point when it's running, despite the fact that you know we're using non sparking media and a very small charge of black powder. But even so, you got to treat it like it's a live bomb and it, it really could seriously hurt, maim, kill you. So, nothing to, nothing to poke about with. All right, so the charcoal batch has been run for exactly an hour, plus minus a minute or two. Looks like some good black powder. So you see black powder is actually more of a gray color, if anything. Now, between runs, I'm going to clean out the inside of the mill jar and I'm going to basically blast this with an air gun just to try to get any remaining powder off of the media, although it should be pretty clean at this point. And we're just going to go with the uh, activated charcoal now. Get a little agitated. And let's load it up and run it for an hour. All right, so at this point we got all three powders. Each one ran for one hour in the ball mill with the same amount of media and same rotation, uh, rotational speed RPM, obviously. Uh, so now it's time to test them. They, they all look pretty similar. The activated charcoal is a hair darker than the other two, but I'm curious to see how they all stack up. 
So let's set up a little burn test and see if we can't get some, maybe I'll be able to check the frames and see exactly how long each batch burns, maybe six inches or something. I don't know, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> so I got my burn plate set up here and what we'll do is test a little, little line of each of them. I feel, feel a bit like Scarface right now. All right, so we're at about five and a half inches. Need to add a little bit more. Now this isn't a perfectly scientific test, but it should give us a good idea of how quick each black powder is. So I'll actually leave the ruler here just so maybe in the frames, I don't know how quick this camera is, but hopefully I'll be able to catch a couple frames and get an idea of burn rate. Alrighty, so I've got any potential combustibles well out of the way and I'm probably going to smoke out the workshop pretty good here. Alright, so got the flint burning and we'll test the willow charcoal. Safety glasses on. Wow! Alright, I uh, definitely lost a good bit of knuckle hair there. <laughs> but uh, holy shit was that fast. God damn. So on a scale from clap to herp, that was definitely a pretty quick case of the herp flaring up. All right, got the burn plate cleaned off and we're now gonna test the activated charcoal. We used to frequent the pyrotechnic forms quite a bit when I was kind of big into rocketry and pyrotechnics. And they always said activated charcoal despite its huge surface area made for crappy black powder. So I'm, I'm very curious to see if that is in fact true. And let's see what the burn rate looks like. Keep my knuckle hair better distance away from it. All right, so activated charcoal in three, two, one. Definitely slower than the willow, for sure. Still a pretty impressive black powder, especially for only being milled for one hour. But definitely not on the same level as the willow charcoal. Now to test the one I'm really curious about, the graphite. So graphite is super pure form of carbon, allotrope of carbon. And I think uh, that particular graphite is around 99.95% pure. And I'm not sure what the uh, the remaining, you know, 0 0.05, very minuscule amount of impurity is. Maybe some kind of binder for extruding a graphite rod or however it is they make those. I tried to look up how they actually make graphite rods and all that comes up is fishing poles. You know, graphite rod fishing poles. Man, something about the simple green mixing with like the uh, black powder residue smells like the most putrid ass you've ever experienced in your life. Stanky! And now for the hopeful finale, <laughs> the graphite. Alright, I'll call that six inches and move that out of the way. Let's see how this does. Alright, graphite in three, two, one. Uh, the hello? You're supposed to react. I might need a torch. It definitely seems a lot less reactive. Ooh! <laughs> oh, it burns like shit. Unreal. I can't believe there's that level of difference. I knew it wouldn't be as fast, but to see how how utterly terrible this burns. And it looks like it's a very incomplete combustion too. I mean, you can see there's huge chunks of slag left over, which is probably potassium nitrate that wasn't consumed. Unreal. So on a scale from herp to clap, that was definitely 
the clap. Just a slow burning annoyance <laughs> that you can luckily fix with the proper prophylactic. Very interesting. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed. I'm not sure if there was too much to learn there, but I thought it was pretty cool to be able to compare the burn rates of different carbon sources. And, you know, it was definitely visible, at least by eye, that the homemade willow charcoal was by far the fastest. Activated charcoal, not too bad. I was, I was actually impressed. It's definitely a viable source. If you're making rocket engines or something, that'll work totally fine. And then graphite is just a total crapshoot. Um, I've also heard that, you know, charcoal briquettes, you know, the, the fake charcoal that you buy in the stores pressed and pre-pregnated with lighter fluid. That is absolute garbage. Don't even go anywhere near that. Um, you're better off getting the lump hardwood charcoal because that's actually the real stuff. But pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe. And if you like what we're doing enough on the page, I hope you'll consider donating on Patreon so I can keep these videos rolling. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.